All right, let's go to work. Okay, this is why we can't stay in here. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. I mean, now this is soap making, uh, a half of the soap making from yesterday. We've already boxed some and put it, but like, I can't take it anymore. It's so unorganized. It's such a mess. And I, mentally, I can't do it. And I'm glad there's only a few more days in here. <laughs> So the first part of my day, I would say I start cleaning, kind of. At the bare minimum, I pick stuff up that might have been left on the floor, and I get ready to start all of my laptop work, which is typically emailing. Thank you. You're welcome, Sugar Plum. Um, so anyways, I'm doing that. I'm submitting payroll. I'm doing emails. I won't be focused on them right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's do some laptop work. So the beginning of the soap making process, the way we do things right now starts the day before with prep. I prepped all of this the day before. This is 42 pounds of coconut oil per bowl. These are 25 quart bowls. And yes, I spilled some of that lye water on myself on the floor. That's why PPE is very important. Um, so this is called the heat transfer method. It's where we use our very, very hot lye water solution. And this lye water solution also has rhubarb root in it, something I've been using for a little bit now. We've been experimenting with the pigments that we use now that we've gone all natural and I really wanted a really deep, rich colored bar and it's not super easy to do with natural pigments. So we sourced a new rhubarb root powder and we now add it into the lye water and it is awesome. Um, I would not say the bar is pink anymore. It's almost like a deep red and I'm so excited about it because it's not easy to figure out with plant pigments. So what you're seeing here is that lye, water, and rhubarb mixed with all of the other ingredients. We have the oil, the yogurt, the coconut milk, all of the florals are at the bottom of that bowl as well as the apple cider vinegar. The lye water solution is melting all of that down and then I added the salt and I am now using my large uh, stick blender to blend this and that is the process of actually turning it into soap. Here at Say It Sense, we make salt soap only, and all of our soaps now have some sort of a food puree in it. This one is yogurt, which I guess is not technically a food puree that we puree in-house, um, but that is the food that's in this. Other things have pureed carrot, apple, things like that. One thing I'm asked a lot is if it rots, and the answer is no. That sodium hydroxide or lye water solution that I added fully preserves everything that's in this so it's not going to rot but it is very difficult to ship to other countries I'll say that so all of the soap that I'm making today is just under 400 bars and we really can't make more than that at this moment with this current system um, I will only be using this system for a few more weeks. We're getting ready to custom order some molds and a special cutter for those molds so that we can make our soap faster, cut our soap faster, etc. I don't think people really understand how expensive it is to grow a soap making business. All of those things together are just under $3,000 and I already have some of the equipment on me now that I have not been using. Uh, because we have just started making batches this size. If you're a soap maker and you wonder why the heck I use the heat transfer method, um, I've done both ways for the last several months and I've just experimented with what works best. I don't know why I didn't cut all this out here, sorry. I found that the heat transfer method causes it to sit a little bit longer before it's ready to cut, maybe 20 minutes, but it's also way less hot to touch. If we use the normal soap making method, which is where the oils are already melted before we add our cooled lye water solution, um, it, it's very, very hot and like burning our hands by the time that we are able to cut it. Salt soap is ready to cut like in an hour. And if you don't cut it that fast, all of your wires will break on the wire cutters. So this is just the way that I prefer and I like. I only showed you guys four slabs, but I made eight slabs total today. And we cut all of those slabs into five loaves. And one of those loaves is a mini bar loaf. These each represent uh, 10 bars. And yeah, so this is the process. Right now we're doing everything one by one. We also cut our bars one by one, which I will not be doing forever. I used to have a multi-bar cutter 
the issue with it is I broke all of my wires one day on a uh, loaf of salt soap. I had been experimenting with timing for cutting and things like that, and it didn't go well. And by the time I went to go change the wires, the bolts had rusted and they were so difficult to get off and I was so frustrated. I was like, let's just buy a single bar cutter, something that is easy to change the wire if it breaks. And I knew it was temporary. I knew I was going to be making a lot more soap soon. So I was just like, let's just do it. Um, but here shortly, we'll be able to cut about 40 pounds of salt soap all at once. There will only be two cuts. That will be to cut the block into loaves and the loaves into bars. So these were just cut, but they were also just made like an hour ago. So they are still changing color. This actually lightens up quite a bit. Um, and we noticed that the next day the soap gets soda ash, um, which is where there's quite literally like a, a salt or chalky look on the outside of the bar. Totally normal, totally natural. The way that we could fix that would be with a steamer, but we choose not to. It's natural soap, and we used to sell it um, because of how pretty it was, but people were really telling us how amazing it was for their skin and how much it was helping them with all kinds of things. I was like, you know what? We're selling out so fast, and we still are, so let's just start trying to go commercial and make a ton more soap, and artisan bars just aren't the way that I could make a ton of soap at once. And that's why our bars are now mostly single color simple bars. I'm looking rough, but I started making soap at almost 11 and it is cut by, uh, it's just before three right now. And I am going to go um, pay our leasing guy our fees to get into the warehouse. So, Okay, and then um, they're on the... These are not the ones I just made, but yes, sweetheart. Um, this is what the mini bars, we have a single label that wraps around these. So these actually go into the package fairly naked and then the regular size bars, um, they go into the boxes. And this is what, this is what it looks like. We're currently, currently shipping those. 